site. And today I'm going to present on the entity. Uh, Right. Yes. I'll just mention that one. The next session in room two is cancelled. Uh, so general will be the host of everybody. So in the next session, just stay in this room. Yeah. What 
done here is created a um, views plugin. Um, that you just fill in these little things here, the text tokens, etc. If you want, choose whether you have your display count. And I've also written into it um, suggestions, tips, and things to how to improve and dev it into Watchdog. Um, and essentially what the module's doing, it's picking up the, it automatically picks up the ID of the entity that you've actually put um, in this page. So in other words, um, this particular entity is a node. And so um, it automatically picks up that ID and then does its internal stuff, which we'll look at in a second. So, we'll go back to the actual module. and the size of the module, they're the files that have been involved in creating it. And you can see there, that's the, um, the plugin, and the rest of them are pretty much cosmetic, uh, well, they're just standard, well, I'll go through them. Uh, 11 files, three top level directories, so I'll split it all up so that it's easy to um, see the structure one subdirectory and fundamentally it's based around the views plugin uh, this is the d7 module d8 is also based around plugins so in this instance d7 and d8 are at a very conceptual top level pretty similar i.e. the swapping out plugins so what i actually did is made sure that the the files themselves, the D7 things, were all minimalistic and essentially put the brains into this, these four classes here. And the four classes themselves, um, as you can see, one's the initial class, the next one's the setup, the one after is the advice, um, which gives the tips, and the only one that actually really pulls something out, the out one. said those are the brains. So what I'll do now is just take you through um, some of the the code and you know why it didn't chose and um, made certain decisions etc on the code itself. So so this is the initial class. Just I'm not expecting you to take in um, the actual lines of code or anything like that. But you can just see there isn't that much in the initial class um, there. And this is essentially just setting up some defaults for the, um, the views plugin. Because I'll, t I'll take you through the views plugin page first. So the views plugin page um, is here. And what you pretty much do for a views plugin is you, um, whichever one that you go to override, and I think I overwrote the table views plugin. And so this extends that, which gives you the vast majority of the functionality. And then what you have to do is swap out your code that you want to change. <coughs> so for here, this is the vendor. So nearly the whole of the module, you, you might think, should be a really complicated thing. In actual fact, because I've um, moved it out into a class, into those four classes all together, this is essentially the only little bit that's um, doing anything. Is that big enough on screen? Will well, that help, actually? Um, yes. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is the only bit that's actually pushing out anything to the screen. In other words, the that's this bit here, the bit of interest. Uh, the other, the options form is just that bit there. Yeah. Um, here's the options form, so you just have to create an options form, and I've obviously done that. 
So that's the actual views plugin um, bit of code. And the actual class that I've created, um, this was this, the initial one was setting up some defaults. And then we I push it through into the yeah. Then this actually starts setting up the class of interest. And because this is this is a little bit of a um, thing on OO stuff, which is quite relevant, especially when that next talk is cancelled. And um, because I've created this class and I'm pushing certain things in like the view um, that sort of the, the view and the defaults which was the defaults page um, because I'm pushing those sort of things in um, I'm using a construct and when you use a construct um, pretty much you have to push everything in so in other words that view there would have to go into the class itself so because I didn't want that view in the class that's why I've actually pushed that one into a separate one, which is like a previous class there. The advice section here, um, this was giving, um, because there was lots of issues um, the other modules were having in terms of um, speed and um, various different things on there. Um, I decided to actually give people advice behind the scenes on using Watchdog and then go to the module here and this here and it gives you performance tips. So that was this section of code here. And as you can see it's um, pretty easy to understand and then it's just got one little bit of logic block here. Let's see. And then you might say, oh, like you're not meant to nest lots of bits. This is literally the whole logic there. So you just work down the yeah, the is and um, then it goes off and um, comes up with its suggestions. And um, that's Now the outreach here. This was the going back to the this here. Going back. This is the going back to the actual views plugin, the render bit. So we've got that that little bit of code doing the render, and essentially it's all coming out of this here. And that is this class here. And as you can see, I've kept it relatively short short as I can and um, it's, it might not look it but if you're going through the actual code itself because the, the blocks of code the methods are kept pretty short as in you know it's only that length each thing is pretty easy to understand so the first bits are doing the uh, pickups and so we, uh, we can define some variables the next bit here is running the advice logic um, which was obviously that other class that we looked at. Uh, here is constructing the tokens and here is pushing the tokens into a sensible order. In terms of the other pages on the um, site, it's, sorry, the, the other um, files within the module is obviously got the readme there which everyone pretty much knows about. The TPL um, template, again I've kept that really small and, um, and tried to be as minimalistic as possible on that. And again with the CSS, kept that as minimalistic as possible. So in other words, if somebody else wants to come and style the module, which you probably will do, um, somebody else wants to style the module to be a bit different, 
uh, which you probably will do. <coughs> the having only a very little chat, put this in as as um, as power, well as with as little power as possible um, means that it's really easy for other people to override it in the beam layer. And then the, the info file, that's obviously pulling in the different um, classes here. And the new style plugin. And um, obviously there's not too much involved in that. And then the dot module file, which is in a Drupal, Drupal 7 module, that is essentially the um, the main module, the, sorry, the main file where um, Drupal initially goes to to um, establish anything to do its stuff. Uh, so within here, I've created um, pretty much just as, I've tried to keep it as minimal as possible and put all the intelligence into the classes here. So if we just run through this, um, got this uh, entity hub help which gives a little bit of um, information on the actual module itself. And um, say this tells views which this tells views um, which uh, views API we're using. So and that's probably just the most well it's pretty much going to be also the most recent. You just look that up in the um, views module when you're um, pulling it across and then um, overriding your existing plugin. Um, here, set up a theme, which is pretty basic stuff for uh, developed modules before. And then just added the um, CSS file. So as you can see, the actual module file itself, module file itself, in other words, the Drupal 7, which in most modules, or in a lot of modules, is like the intelligence of the module um, is kept to a minimum, um, which allows the porting of those classes, because those classes will pretty much be able to be moved across to a Drupal 8 module and um, with very little change. And then all I'll have to do with the Drupal 8 is plug it into pretty much the um, the dot module file equivalent in Drupal 8. So, in terms of <coughs> so, my advice if you're creating a Drupal module now, and um, especially seeing as we've got Drupal 8 looming is rip the brains of your module out and well pass it out um, so that you you're not having to essentially write a new a completely new module you're only writing part of the new module and so i wouldn't expect this i would expect this to probably take about a day to turn into drupal 8 um, module uh, if it had been written a dip, you know, old school way, uh, it would have probably have taken, I don't know, it would have been a complete rewrite. Uh, so where is this module now? Um, it's currently in the applications queue. Um, just did some last minute updates on it. So if we look down here, it's here, there, and I don't know whether any of you, whether you, how many of you are familiar with um, publishing modules. Um, if once, until you get yourself a Drupal.org, um, well, not an identity, pass to create modules yourself, um, you have to submit them, and it's a one-time review, and once you get through that review, um, you then can just instead of pushing the sand well you push in the sandbox if you want, but you can immediately publish a module that you feel is ready. And um, so I've submitted this and I submitted it about 
three weeks ago initially and resubmitted it again last night with some changes and it's currently here in the queue and these are obviously other people um, that have submitted there so if I click on here um, this is the module this is the sandbox page so this is going to be the module page itself where, um, when it gets passed through and it becomes a module itself um, and on this I've created a little Today I'd like to take you through the entity page of module A. Uh, Here it is in action. So that's uh, a video to explain. It allows you to navigate the um, basic instructions about what it's about and then uh, some screenshot instructions as well. Um, so getting back to the issue queue, what you actually do is submit and you create your module, create your sandbox and then you submit your module as an issue to the project's application page and it's just the same as any other um, issue queue that you have to do a few, a few things to get it through. Uh, one, obviously supply a description. Two, say exactly where the module is so that people can run it through this code review, which I will show you in a moment. One of the things they ask is that you're not duplicating modules. So before I actually created this module, I obviously Googled to find out if there was any other modules that did a similar thing. And it turned out there was actually a page on Drupal. Here showed a listing of modules that do this type of thing. I know a few of Right, and these are similar <coughs> modules that have attempted this sort of thing. So when I was actually submitting it, well, not when I was submitting it, before I actually wrote it, I reviewed all these to see if it did what I did what was required for the client and um, they all seem to have their issues so I had to go through each of those modules at the time to see if it was um, if they were worth using and then when it came to submitting this page I then had to re-go through them all and I don't know whether I had to or not but I did and just give a little review of each one of why I I actually wrote this new module um, instead and so I submitted that and I like to think that I write things pretty good code with coding standards and as far as I was concerned the code that I'd written was good and I thought it would have gone through, whizzed through the review module, every uh, the review process pretty quick and um, the code itself been not an issue um, and I've got my browser set up so that the actual code is um, nicely formatted, looks nice, it's meant to follow Drupal standards and things like that. However, when you go through the, when you submit your module to the review, what it does is you put it through this program here which is a web page, you have to put your, uh, your git um, repository here and then you submit the branch and what it does is it analyzes absolutely every single line of code and it goes through and every, even if you just leave a space at the end of a line or if you put a comment and you have put a full stop or you've, um, yeah, you've put a comment on the, something that I um, used to do quite a lot and was doing, and I quite like doing it, was um, if you're going through a variable, you know, you're converting a variable to something very slightly different, um, just put an EG of what you actually see, you can actually looking down the code and you can see, all right, I can see exactly what I've done to get it, you know, why I've done this little section of code. All those sort of things, and um, this review did not like, and so you know, 
they made the code more slightly more readable, but they had to be um, either put on a separate line, which then didn't read it right. So a lot of those actually took out. Um, so initially, when I actually clicked on this to review it, it was, as you can imagine, that even if there's a space on the end of the line, it creates one of these. So it was a massive, great big long list, and you just had to work through everything. It's taken quite a long time to actually work through them all. And I've got it down to these, but I can't do anything about these, because these are part of the views entity module. Uh, sorry, the views um, views module, and it's part of the uh, views plugin style, and it's just if we go back to here. Basically, those these slight um, issues um, are something that I can actually um, sort out. This option is for me. Um, they are something I can sort out because that's what um, the way it's been coded in Drew in um, views, and I'm actually pulling that class in. in see here. Um, so going back to
How long did you expect it to take to get through the review process? Well, I initially, because I, I coded it and I checked all the code, and as far as my idea was concerned, everything was perfect. I thought it would have whizzed through. Um, however, um, and it's like the camel case stuff. I prefer writing stuff in camel case, you know, because that's the proper way you can look at a, a, um, a variable and you know where it's come from depending on how you've written it with the camel case. Um, so that's something I always like doing. However, I was under the impression that with Drupal 7 and because Vue was probably the main module that I'd um, used that had, um, that was object orientated, um, all that sort of camel case stuff wasn't there. So I didn't think you were allowed to write camel case stuff. So I'd reluctantly written it without it and then um, had to put it back in because it was the same, put it, all these suggestions back in. Um, so in all, um, fixing the big long thing, that just took a while. It's just really annoying just going through and going like, I've got to get rid of that space at the end of the line, whatever. Um, you know, so we just went through and eventually got through it. Um, so the actual doing the mistakes is just like an evening and day or one, you know what I mean? Like uh, just going through and just, I didn't do it all at once, you know, I just kept going back to it now and again. Um, then the actual, when you submitted it, and um, what initially happened is the way the issue queue works is you submit it and somebody reviews it. But because it's you know, open source and we're all sort of like meant to be helping and all that sort of thing, and they encourage you to try and review other people's stuff and do you know, some of the work. And if you do that, is yours, you know, other people will look at yours more. Yeah. And um, somebody had initially looked at mine and sort of like, you could tell them they want to get their module through like that night, so they were just going through and they looked like, one tiny little word couldn't, well, quick sense or something couldn't be helpful or, um, you know, I didn't feel as though it was very in the spirit of things, you know what I mean? So obviously I submitted it because I thought I'd got it right, you know what I mean? Um, and because I've got that review, I think that was no, you know, I think when you first submit a module, somebody has to have a look at it. And then after that, um, it took a while for somebody to look at it again. But I pulled it from the queue in terms of, you know, somebody cut it an issue, and then I went, actually, I've got a few things to fix here. Um, so I actually left that um, with this coming up. I've revisited it. Um, but it took 16 days for that um, review of somebody that's actually manually gone through things. and. Um, this bit here. Uh, yeah, it, it took um, a few days for that to come um, from when it was initially it was initially submitted 23 days ago, and then it took 17 days for somebody to really go through it properly. Um, uh, so I would expect, I don't know, I'm expecting it to go through now um, reasonably quick. But I don't, if you submit one, I don't think you can really expect less than about three weeks, I would say. Um, but it depends. I haven't had the time recently to go and review other people's modules to um, try and speed things up. And I also left my mistake where it needed fixing. And so essentially what happened is when you're happy with it, you click on this needs review, yeah. um, and it change that back to needs review, and then resubmit it. Um, yeah, so that cover your question. Just to mention again, they're actually looking at a review of the uh, of the entire process. Yeah, so that was something that was said yesterday in the keynote or Yeah, that the they've got a new bot. To actually go through it, I think it's better than my question. Yeah, you know. yeah that's more for actual patches to achieve that. Oh, right. But yeah, there's definitely a report of the project. 
to her about the digital process. Well, um, there's a group on digital.org called Code by Magazine, so I think people, you want to review other people's um, projects, that's a lot of information there, but there is an actual um, code review team who are the ones who can then take it to the game and turn off the phone. Yeah. 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 Ye